Welcome to Church of the Apostles, where all people and all questions are welcome as we join together in wide-eyed wonder of God's presence in the present. Welcome as well to World Communion Sunday as we celebrate in the unity that we all share with Christians across this world and as we recognize that it is Christ who welcomes us to the table of his providing. Therefore, if you haven't done so already, I invite you to retrieve elements to be consecrated later in the worship service for communion. Customary elements include either wine or juice or bread and a cracker. Today, we are reminded that this pandemic that we continue to live in is one that has created one of the greatest seasons of change most of us have ever known. We have been shaken to our core and we are looking for the constant in the midst of it, which we claim and call as God. We long for God's presence in the present. Our experience today resembles that of the early Christians following Jesus' resurrection to whom the Apostle Paul wrote many letters. So this season, we will be exploring those, wis- those letters, searching for Paul's wisdom and the reminder of God's presence that is with us now, as it was then. We gather to be reminded of God's faithfulness and how we are to live as Jesus' disciples. Today, our theme is the goal toward which we strain. And it comes from Paul's writing to the Christians in Philippi, which point those Christians, which points us to Jesus Christ as the example of righteousness. When we follow Jesus with our lives, we are called heavenward in Jesus Christ. And so as we enter into this time of worship, I invite you to breathe in deeply and to release any anxieties, concerns, or fears that might keep you from God's presence and to breathe in again the richness and the fullness of life that God has uniting us with his spirit. During the following hymn, We invite you as well to light a candle in whatever way is most appropriate for you, reminding you of the presence that is of God here and now in our midst, uniting us, uniting all of us together in the spirit of God's love.
reading the first verses of Psalm 19, when you hear the heavens declare the glory of God, please respond, the skies proclaim the work of his hands. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Day after day, they pour forth speech. Night after night, they reveal knowledge. They have no speech. They use no words. No sound is heard from them. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. Yet their voice goes out into all the earth, their words to the ends of the world. In the heavens, God has pitched a tent for the sun. The heavens declare the glory of God. The skies proclaim the work of his hands. It is like a bridegroom coming out of his chamber, like a champion rejoicing to run his course. It rises at one end of the heavens and makes its circuit to the other. Nothing is deprived of its warmth. Please join me in prayer. We have come from places far and near to worship the one true God and learn how to live as his disciples. Thank you, loving Christ, for meeting us here now and always. Amen. often we rely on ourselves, believing that we can save ourselves. 
trusting in God's love and God's mercy, let us confess our sin. Redeemer God, forgive our failings and our sin, committed both knowingly and unknowingly. May sin have no power over us, that we may share in the righteousness of Jesus Christ. Amen. God hears and responds to our prayers. God forgives our sin and brings us to new life. May we live in the assurance of God's grace now and forevermore. Amen. So this is the time in our service when I talk to the young or the young at heart. And I want you to think today about how you've been feeling. We've been in this pandemic for now over six months. And if you're anything like me, you're getting pretty tired of it. So I want you to think about what is it that you're missing? And I'm saying that because we need to name that. And I want you to share that with, with the people that you live with, with your parents, grandparents, siblings, whoever else is in your house. I want you to, to start that conversation, or maybe this will start that conversation with them. Um, or among your family, to say, wow, what, what did we used to do that we're not doing now that we really do miss? And I name that because you are not alone in that. That is true for almost every household in America, almost every household in the world. This pandemic isn't something that's just affecting us. It's affecting everybody. And today on World Communion Sunday, we're thinking about how we connect with people all over the world. And unfortunately, right now, one of the ways that we connect is in those things that we're missing. So let's name them. Let's name that it's going to be this way for this period of time. We can't necessarily change it. 
but we can take away its power to, to immobilize us or, or, or to make us feel like we have no power. We can choose differently. And we can choose to think creatively in how might we be able, are any of the things that we're missing, could we possibly do them in some other way? Is there some way that we could um, connect? I know a lot of people have been missing the connections with friends. But I've also heard about um, some, some girls who got on the telephone and talked to each, FaceTimed each other while they painted their nails. So it felt like they were doing it together. Or they worked on um, playing a game together by saying how many, if you both set up the game in your different houses and move each other's piece based on, um, you can say how many times places you get to roll, you get to move your piece or whatever. There's, there's so many other ways of being together. And this is a time when we are being invited to explore all of those. So I just want you to, to recognize that we are all living in, an, in a time in which we've never lived before. And hopefully, we'll never have to live again. But for now, let's look at where, where we can be honest about how we feel and where we might be able to be creative in coming up with different solutions. Will you pray with me? Thank you, God, for all your love. Help us today to know we are not alone because you are always with us, loving us to the end. Amen. In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he names reasons why he should be considered righteous as it is in his sufferings that he is united with Christ and receives resurrection. An ancient word from the book of Philippians, third chapter, fourth through the 14th verses. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more. Circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee, as to zeal, a persecutor of the church, as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever games I, gains I had, these I have come to regard as loss because of Christ. More than that, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death, if somehow I may attain the resurrection from the dead. Now that I have already obtained this, excuse me, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. Holy wisdom, holy words, thanks be to God. So as we begin this morning, I want you to think about two questions. Through the circumstances of this year, 
How are you changing? And what are we becoming together? It was the best of times. It was the worst of times. It was the age of wisdom. It was the age of foolishness. It was the epic of belief. It was the epic of incredulity. It was the season of light. It was the season of darkness. It was the spring of hope. It was the winter of despair. The beginning words to Charles Dickens' novel, A Tale of Two Cities, which I saw this week and which spoke to me about the times in which we are living. For many of us, this is the most significant change in our lives. That's not true just for us, but that is true for the entire world. As I said in the children's time, today is, the, is World Communion Sunday when we think about how we are connected and worshiping and celebrating communion with all of the, the Christians all over the world. But we are also grieving with Christians all over the world during this pandemic, during this darkness. For those of us who are extroverts, we are missing that connection and community that we long for. It's, it's in being with others that, that we can, can sort through our thoughts and, and refuel ourselves. For those of us that are huggers, we are missing that personal touch of another. Because that is how we show our concern and our care for one another. And we are, we are so grieving that, not being able to do that. And for those of us with independent spirits, we are so tired of rules that are limiting where we can go and how we do things and masking our emotions. We are looking for something different, longing for something to be different. And yet, here we are in what I'm going to call the messy middle. But it's in this messiness, it's in this uncomfortableness that change happens. It's when we're uncomfortable that we're willing to look at another way of being. I want to, to um, share with us and want us to think about this place and time that we're in using um, a theory by Brene Brown called a day two. Brown lifts up that in the beginning, back in March, it was new and we could bear down and say, do you remember when they said it was two weeks? And we could say, we could do anything for two weeks. We've got this. And then the weeks became months. And now we've passed the six-month mark. And the reality is, there's not a really clear end in sight. Yes, there's a, a vaccine sometime in 2021, that just seems like forever. And I want to name that, not because I'm trying to depress us, but because by naming it, we take away its power. We own the power then, because we can decide how we react to it. Here in this messy middle, Brown contends that that is where the magic happens. That's where we can be transformed, even though it, nobody likes it. Nobody likes the uncomfortable feelings. Nobody likes the unknowing. Nobody likes this darkness that I think is going to get worse before it gets better. 
sorry, I'm not trying to be the harbinger of bad news today, but it appears that I am. But as the days get shorter and the winter gets colder and we become more enclosed in our homes, we're going to have to take a deeper look at who we are inside. And that's what I think we've been called to do all along. Called to recognize how Christ has claimed us and who we are and how we live out our faith. And is there a way in which we can be better at being together? I think that is in our challenge. As I listen to Paul's words, he begins um, by naming all of his credentials. And if there's anyone who is blameless under the law, it is him. He has all the credentials. But that's not enough. That's not enough to, to guarantee him his spot. He has, within his reaction and, and experience of Christ Jesus, he was brought to his knees. And he realizes that it is his relationship with Christ Jesus that means more than anything he has done or has been. That that is where his hope lies. His hope lies in Christ. He also names why he is worthy of our attention to his wisdom. And then he goes on to normalize the struggle of what it means to be a Christian. Being Christian is not easy. It's not meant to be. If we look at Christ's life, Christ's life was not easy. It took him to the cross. But when we also take on the sufferings for our faith when we accept and, and, and remember how Christ suffered for us, we too can get through knowing that Christ and God suffer with us again in the ways that we are suffering now. This Christianity is not meant to be just a nice thing to do. It's real work. It's real work to scrutinize how we live and whether our, the way we live aligns with what we say. Do we walk the talk? That is often the criticism of Christians. Paul then tries to put the struggle into perspective that by by suffering with Christ, we will then receive the resurrection of Christ. But if we're honest, we don't like this part about struggling. We don't want it to be hard. And if we're honest about being American Christians, we have to name that we have never had to, we, we've never been, we've always been privileged in our religion. We were, we were never oppressed or made to be, feel less than because of our faith. Here Paul names that if we are willing to suffer and die, just as Christ did, then we will receive the same gifts that Christ did. But even more, he also reminds us, he puts us all into, pers in, into perspective and, and challenges our expectations by reminding us that there is a blessing in this, that we have already been blessed because we have been claimed by Christ. And it has nothing to do with anything we have done or who we are except that we are loved 
and forgiven by God. That we are children of God. And that is enough, my friends. That is enough. And that is where we have to draw our strength from in these challenging times. So here in this darkness, we are called to be listening to the unexpected voices that are around us, naming their need, naming their pain, We need to be willing to to see the injustices that are around us and saying they have to change. We can be better people. We are invited to be in this messy middle, to rely more on God than on our own self-serving and what we think our saving ways. We cannot save ourselves. It's time to rely on God. How might we more fully become the beloved community that God has always intended us to be? This week I also heard a quote by Sonia Renee Taylor that I thought was very prophetic and I wanted to share with you. She says, We will not go back to normal. Normal never was. Our pre-corona existence was not normal, other than we normalized greed, inequity, exhaustion, depletion, Extraction, disconnection, confusion, rage, hoarding, hate, and lack. We should not long to return, my friends. We are being given the opportunity to stitch a new garment, one that fits all of humanity and nature. This is where we are. And Christ Jesus is with us. Christ has made us all his own. We have, in Paul's words, the prize ahead of us. We just need to strain forward. It is time to see the pain and needs of our others and value them more than our own. In Paul's words, there are people all around us letting us know that they are struggling under systems that were created to dehumanize people of color, particularly. And so the question is, will we choose differently? In closing, I'm going to go back to Dickens' novel, where the character puts himself in place of a man who is set to die. And hear these words. It is a far, far better thing I do than I have ever done before. It is a far, far better rest than I have ever known. May it be so. Amen. And now, will you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father and Comforter of all, we give thanks this day for your continued love and mercy in this messy middle. Help us to hear the cries for justice, Help us to choose to live more aligned with your will and your ways. As a community, there are those who are on our hearts and minds. And so we name Marty Holmes, Ellen Schellenberger, Kathy Zerbe, Chris Conrad, Mark Reinhardt, 
Ken Schenberger, Angela Slater, the Ebersoles' brother-in-law and their friend, Frank Wilson's sister-in-law, Kay Hahn, all the frontline workers, all those who are suffering with the virus and their families, all of our school workers, teachers, parents, students, and school officials. We also grieve together with the family and friends of Becky Meyer, who has passed away. We also celebrate as a community by recognizing Reverend Richard Fainel for 65 years of ordained ministry, for the joy of Brother Hawk, who visits the Sunday outdoor worship service, and with, with Reverend Motes for receiving the Lancaster Theological Seminary's Alan S. Meck Award for Pastoral Excellence. Help us to hear the cries of all who are in need as we seek to live as your people. We lift up the prayer you taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Listening to the feedback that we've received from individuals like you over the last several months, we have been working to redesign our donate page into an easier to use and more intuitive give page. And I'm pleased to share that today is the official launch day of our new give page. Some highlights to this page. One is that you can give electronically through the new easy to use safe and secure giving portal which accepts gifts from either savings accounts, checkings accounts, debit cards, or credit cards. Plus, we have a brand new Give Plus app that you can download to Android and Apple devices in order to give through any mobile device. On the page, there is also information about what you can give in kind, be it seasonal things that we are collecting for ministry or year-round ones. Plus, there's a section about how you can gift your time to be about God's ministry. When I was looking through the site, one of the things that stuck out for me, a surprise, was that our congregation collects canceled postage stamps for the Wounded Veterans Stamp Project. So go, check out this new page at apostlesucc.org slash gift and see the multitude of ways in which you can give in service to God's ministry. Thank you.
As part of the worldwide community of Christians, we remember Jesus' meal with his disciples. Jesus sets the table today. Jesus' welcome extends to all of humanity, people of all ages, all genders, of all ethnicities and cultures, of all economic conditions are welcome at Christ's table. No one can earn a place at this meal. Participate in your home or in your patios, on Facebook or YouTube, on the church lawn or even by phone or in the parking lot. Whatever is the way that you are called to worship this day. You need only desire a deeper relationship with the risen Christ. Bring your hopes and your history. Bring your deliberations and your doubts. Come as your whole self. Let us pray. We do not come by merit, but by having fallen short. Forgive us for following the devices and desires of our own hearts. Forgive our blindness. Grant that we might share a portion of the mind that is in Christ, seeing the world as he does. Amen. Now I invite you to hold the elements that you're going to use. And join me in this repeat after me prayer. Bless the hands that plant the seed. Bless the hands that plant the seed. Bless the hands that make the bread. Bless the hands that make the bread. Bless the hands that bring the loaf. Bless the hands that tend the vine. Bless the hands that tend the vine. Bless the hands that make the juice. Bless the hands that make the juice. Bless the hands that raise the cup. Bless the hands that raise the cup. On the night that the fellowship was broken, Jesus said, my body is broken. Then he blessed the bread, broke it, and gave it to them, and had them eat as we eat in his memory. On the night the fellowship was broken, and each went different ways. Jesus said, this is my blood poured out for you.
drink of it, all of you, in the remembrance of me. Bless those who gather. Bless those who make it so. Bless those in doubt. Bless those who know. Bless those who seek and those who find. Bless the passionate. Bless the kind. Bless those who remember and those who dream. Amen. So now if you will take your bread. This is the body of Christ broken for you. And to lift your cup. This is the blood of Christ shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin and the renewal of all life. Take and drink. May God's presence go before us, behind us, above us, and beneath us through all the joys and struggles of our lives. And may we notice and know the love of our creator, redeemer, and sustainer now and always. Amen. Oscuridad. 
Yeah. Okay.